Today we're going to use generating functions to find a closed form for the nth term in the Fibonacci sequence. And so if you saw a recent CyberMath video, he did something similar with a different sequence. So just as a reminder, what's the Fibonacci sequence? The zeroth term is zero, the first term is one, and then to get the next term, you just add the sum of the previous terms. Okay, so let's call our generating function g of x. And now what is a generating function? It's a power series, so it sums from n equals zero to infinity, and it has the nth Fibonacci number times x to the n. All right, so what would this look like well, the zeroth Fibonacci number is zero, so it's zero times x to the zero. That's zero. Plus one x to the first. The next Fibonacci number is also one, so plus x squared. The next Fibonacci number is two. The next one is three, and so forth. Okay, so this is the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. So let's consider the power series, which is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f n plus 2 x to the n. So this is a slightly different power series than the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. And using this recursion, we know that this is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f n plus 1 plus fn x to the n. And our goal is we want to express the left-hand side and the right-hand side in terms of g of x. And we're going to use that to get a formula for g of x. And then using that formula, we could use, we'll, we'll use that formula to give us a, a, a formula for fn. Okay, so let's start with the left-hand side. So let's write out a few of the terms and then we can see if we can compare it to g of x. The second Fibonacci number is one. So this is one plus the third Fibonacci number is two. So the terms will look like this. It's a third. Okay, and so how does this compare to g of x? It's very similar to g of x. It's very similar to g of x over x squared, right? If you divide all these terms by x squared, this would go to 1, this would go to 2x, this would go to 3x squared. But this x term is going to cause us some problems. So let's subtract off the x and then divide by x squared. So our left-hand side is equal to g of x minus x over x squared. Now the right-hand side Let's break this apart into two sums. So this is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of fn plus 1 x to the n plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of fn x to the n. And what is this? This is exactly g of x. So we don't even have to worry about that. We just have to worry about this left-hand side or the left-hand part of the right-hand side. All right, so let's write out the terms again. The first Fibonacci number is 1. The second Fibonacci number is also 1. The third Fibonacci number is 2. And so forth. And then this is plus more terms, plus g of x. Right, this is what the right-hand side equals. This here is exactly g of x divided by x. So our right-hand side is equal to g of x over x plus g of x. So we now have an equation for g of x. We have g of x minus x over x squared is equal to g of x over x plus g of x. Okay, and I need a little bit more space. So let's bring some terms 
Let's bring some terms to the left-hand side, and then I'll move over to the other board so it's clear. All right, we'll bring all the g of x's to the left. Everything else will go to the right. We have g of x times 1 over x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is equal to 1 over x. Okay, let me bring this to the right hand. Uh, let me bring it to this board. So getting a de common denominator, we have g of x times 1 minus x minus x squared over x squared is equal to 1 over x. And so we get g of x is equal to x over 1 minus x minus x squared. So this is the generating function for the Fibonacci numbers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break this apart using partial fraction decomposition. And that's going to, again, help us find a formula for Fn. That's what we're looking for. All right, and let's just rewrite g of x one more time as negative x over x squared plus x minus 1. And why are we doing that? It's just, I find it easier when you have a leading coefficient of 1 um, for this polynomial. All right, so we need to find the roots of this quadratic here. We could do that with the quadratic formula. So the roots of this quadratic are x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus negative 4. So 5 all over 2. OK? And so, so these, these roots are negative 1 minus root 5 over 2, and negative 1 plus root 5 over 2. OK? And we'll let this quantity here will denote by negative phi. So phi will be 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And this quantity here, we're going to call negative phi bar. Okay, so we have phi, which is the golden ratio, is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Phi bar, which is the conjugate of the golden ratio, is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So we want to express negative x over x squared plus x minus 1 as a over, okay, what were the roots? Negative phi and negative phi bar. So x plus phi plus b over x plus phi bar. All right, this gives us the partial fraction decomposition. Another way to say that, if we cross multiply here, we have negative x is equal to a x plus phi bar plus b x plus phi. All right, and now if we let x equal negative phi bar, so th this will give us a phi bar on the left-hand side. This goes to 0 plus b negative phi bar plus phi. OK, what's phi bar plus phi, negative phi bar plus phi? That's negative 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 plus 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. That's square root of 5. And so we get b is equal to phi bar over square root of 5. Similarly, if we let x equal negative phi to eliminate this part here, we get phi is equal to a negative phi plus phi bar. And what's negative phi plus phi bar? It's negative square root of 5. OK, so this gives us a is equal to phi over negative square root of 5. So our generating function, g of x, is equal to 
we could factor out this 1 over root 5 from both. And what do we have? A would be negative phi over x plus phi. And y, uh, in, the, in the other term is going to be phi bar over x plus phi bar. All right, and we want to have this in the form of having a 1 minus something in both denominators. So what we could do is multiply to this first term here the numerator and denominator by phi bar. And why are we doing that? Well, phi times phi bar is equal to negative 1. Check that on your own. OK, so our generating function is equal to 1 over square root of 5. We're going to have negative, negative 1. That's positive 1 over uh, phi bar x minus 1. And then what we're going to do with this term is we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by phi. So plus negative 1 over phi x minus 1. And we want to have a 1 minus something in our denominators. So let's rewrite this as 1 over root 5. If we want to switch the order here, it's going to come at the cost of a negative. So negative 1 over 1 minus phi bar x. We'd switch this order, comes at a negative. So this is plus 1 over 1 minus phi x. These are both, these both could be expressed as geometric series. So let's do that now and then we'll basically then we'll be done. So this is equal to 1 over root 5 times well negative the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of phi bar x raised to the n plus the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of phi x to the n. OK? And this, again, remember, is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of fn x to the n. So to find a formula for fn, we just have to find what the uh, coefficient of x to the n is on this left-hand side. And that's easy to see. It's 1 over root 5 times negative phi bar to the n plus phi to the n is equal to fn. OK, and now let's just go back and remember what's phi bar and what's phi. We have 1 over root 5. Phi bar was 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the n. And phi is the golden ratio, which is 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the n. And that's equal to the nth Fibonacci number. OK, so if somebody asks you what's the 1,000th Fibonacci number, you could use this formula here. And I know many of you have seen this formula before, but maybe you didn't know why it was true. So that's what we showed today. Let me know if you like this type of video. Generating functions are very useful, so I'm happy to make other ones involving generating functions. All right, see you later.